Each engine is equipped with a bleed air powered starter motor. Bleed air can be provided from a ground air cart, the other operating engine, or the APU. Normally, starter air for the engines is provided by the APU. There are two control panels associated with engine starting. The engine panel is located on the overhead panel and the fuel control switches are located on the control stand. For pre-flight and normal flight operations, the start selectors are in the norm position. The engines can be started manually or can be started automatically by using the auto start system. The auto start switch should be in the on position for normal operations. Prior to engine start, the fuel control switches should be in cutoff. Each engine has two igniters. The EEC automatically uses one igniter for engine starts on the ground. Both igniters are used for in-flight starts. Let's examine a normal start sequence. Auto start is used for normal engine starting. Turn on the auto start system. The auto start system uses the EEC to monitor the engine parameters during the start sequence. Auto start controls the fuel and ignition during start and automatically aborts the start if something goes wrong. Select start on the left start selector. The start valve opens, allowing air to turn the starter. During auto start, the fuel control switches can be moved to run immediately after selecting start. Now select run on the left fuel control switch. The left spar valve opens and the engine valve remains closed during an auto start until the engine has reached sufficient speed. At the appropriate engine speed, the EEC opens the engine fuel valve and energizes an igniter. The EEC automatically selects the appropriate igniter by alternating igniters for each start. The starter remains engaged until starter cutout speed is reached. The start valve closes. And the start selector automatically returns to norm and ignition stops. The start cycle is complete when the engine stabilizes at idle. Let's go back and look at the engine indications as we start the left engine again. Display the secondary engine indications. The ICAS advisory message, engine shutdown, appears anytime the airplane is on the ground and both left and right fuel control switches are in cutoff. A red EGT start limit line is displayed anytime the fuel control switch is in cutoff or the N3 RPM is below idle. The line shows the maximum EGT allowed during start. The compact engine indications show the EGT start limit as red digits. A duct pressure indicator is displayed prior to engine start. The white digits represent the left and right pneumatic duct pressure in PSI. Before engine start, cancel the ICAS message. Now observe the engine indications as you start the left engine.
select Run. Notice that the oil temperature indications are initially amber, while the oil pressure indications are white. The red low oil pressure indications auto start opens the fuel valve and fuel flow begins. When the start valve closes, the start selector returns to norm. When the engine stabilizes at idle, the EGT start limit line disappears. This completes the auto start sequence. During engine start, the auto start system monitors these indications and other parameters. Auto start takes corrective action if the engine parameters are not within their starting limits. Auto start does not monitor oil temperature or oil pressure. The fuel control switch should be moved to cutoff if oil pressure has not increased after initial EGT rise. Let's take a closer look at what auto start does when it discovers abnormal start parameters. If certain abnormal pressures or temperatures are detected, the EEC cycles the engine fuel valve. Cycling the engine fuel valve off then on for a short period of time attempts to correct the abnormal temperatures or pressures so that the start can continue normally. For some conditions, such as hot starts or hung starts, auto start automatically initiates a second start attempt. Before initiating a second start, the EEC shuts off fuel and ignition, then motors the engine for 30 seconds. The second start attempt uses both igniters. If the second attempt fails, auto start aborts the start. The engine motors for 30 seconds. The start valve closes and the start selector then trips to the norm position. The engine start has automatically been aborted. However, the fuel control switch must be manually moved to cut off before another start attempt can be made. Next, we'll look at a manual start. For manual starts, the crew must monitor engine indications and take any corrective action if needed. To manually control the start, turn off the auto start system. This ICAS advisory message reminds you that auto start is disabled. Cancel the ICAS message. Start the right engine. Look for an increase in oil pressure after selecting start. For a manual start, the fuel control switch opens both the spar valve and the engine fuel valve immediately. Fuel should not be added until N3 reaches maximum motoring speed. Maximum motoring speed is the maximum speed that the starter can turn N3. Now that N3 has reached maximum motoring speed, move the fuel control switch to run. Fuel is provided immediately and one of the igniters energizes. 
Continue to monitor the engine indications until the engine stabilizes at idle. The engine is now stabilized at idle. In-flight starts can be done manually or automatically. The in-flight start envelope automatically displays on ICAS whenever a fuel control switch is in cutoff or the engine N3 RPM is below idle. The airspeed range that ensures a successful in-flight start is displayed next to the airplane's current flight level. The maximum altitude for in-flight starts is flight level 300. If the current flight level is greater than this, then the maximum start altitude is displayed. If a windmill start can be used, the start sequence is initiated by moving the fuel control switch from cutoff to run. If a crossbleed start is required, crossbleed displays above the N3 indicator of the shutdown engine. To initiate an in-flight start with crossbleed displayed, first select Start on the Start selector. Then, with Auto Start engaged, the fuel control switch can immediately be moved to run. For in-flight starts, Auto Start makes start attempts indefinitely until the engine either successfully starts or the pilot aborts the attempt by selecting cutoff. Now, let's take a look at the ignition system. During normal operations, the igniters remain off once the engines are running. An auto relight function provides protection against engine flameout and rain or ice ingestion. The respective engine's igniters are activated whenever the engine is at or below idle with the fuel control switch in run. If the engine does not recover but continues to run down below 35% N3, the EEC shuts off fuel and ignition and disables the auto relight function. Now shut down the right engine. The spar and engine fuel valves close and any ignition that was on ceases. Observe the ICAST display as you shut down the left engine. Engine shutdown is indicated by a rapid decrease in EGT and decreasing RPM indications. Now let's cover some non-normal situations during engine start. If the start valve remains closed when commanded open, this ICAS advisory message displays. Now observe the end of the start cycle as the engine approaches idle speed. If the start valve does not close when it should, then AIMS commands the start valve to close at 50% N3. Start selector remains in start. The ICAST caution message engine auto start can display for any one of the following reasons.
An auto start is in progress and EGT exceeds the start limit while on the ground or the red line limit when in flight. The engine auto start caution message also appears if a manual start is initiated and the fuel control switch is selected to run without waiting for max motoring. Remember, during a manual start, run is selected only after N3 reaches max motoring. Select run on the left fuel control switch. With auto start off, the crew must monitor engine indications and perform corrective actions for any non-normal situations. If an engine start must be aborted, move the associated fuel control switch to cut off. Allow the engine to motor for 30 seconds to clear residual fuel and cool the turbine. Then close the start valve by moving the start selector to norm.